This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building your beautiful website, portfolio, or online store. Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be doing a bit of a challenge. I'm going to be using an art supplies subscription box for the first time, and I'm gonna try to make a piece of art with only the supplies in the box. So this is an upgrade box. They very kindly sent me one of their boxes to try. Let's see what's inside. Okay, so first it looks like this box was made in collaboration with the artist Kat Vok. It includes a little zine, some stickers, and a very sweet little art print. And you'll see later that I actually use these as inspiration for my piece. The box also came with this 10 sheet aqua pad, and this was a fun surprise because I own the exact same pad but with 70 sheets. It's 100% cellulose, so I don't usually use it with watercolors. I usually use it with gouache or acryl gouache, but it's great paper. I'm a big fan of it. And then we have this little tissue wrapped bundle of goodness. The first thing that caught my eye were these Viviva watercolor sheets. I've always wanted to try these. If you haven't seen these before, they are like these watercolor swatches or sheets that can be reactivated with water. So you basically have a bunch of watercolors in this tiny business card sized package. It's really neat. Next, there is an erasable colored pencil. If you've seen a few of my videos, then you've probably seen that I use Prismacolor Cola Erase pencils a lot, and it seems like this guy might be something similar to that, so excited to try it. And it turns out there was a bunch of different colors I could have gotten for this, but I'm really happy I got the purple one. There's also a fine liner from Spectrum Noir in this box. It's 0.5 and I don't normally line my artwork, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes, if I can figure out how to incorporate it into my piece. And lastly, there is a little travel watercolor brush. I love that the handle is real wood. I think it's really beautiful and has a really nice hand feel. But I did read through the little zine that came with the box and I was looking on their website and I couldn't find anything about what the bristles are made out of. They feel to me like they are a synthetic. I don't think they are a natural fiber. It doesn't feel like a natural fiber to me. But I couldn't find that info and I do wish it was available because I think it's important to know what our art supplies are made from. That being said, it is a really nice little brush and I'll talk more about it later. So that is everything that came in the box. A nice little selection, I think. I quickly wanted to swatch the items before diving into it. The erasable colored pencil was super light and usually when a pencil is light, that means that the lead is harder, but this pencil lead is actually super, super soft which is good because that means it doesn't damage the watercolor paper and because it's so light it won't really show up in the final painting. But it did have kind of a strange feeling to it. I don't know if any of you guys have tried these pencils before, but whenever you draw with it, something really interesting happens to the tip of the pencil. It sort of forms like a little ball or like a little floppy flap. That sounds crazy, but I zoomed in here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. If you just go to sharpen it in a pencil sharpener, it doesn't go away. You kind of have to rub it off on a separate piece of paper. That being said, I liked the pencil. It erased really well. I think it's a good choice for underwater colors, but I don't think I would use it to sketch completely on its own, if that makes sense. And as for the Viviva color sheets, they are so crazy vibrant. They're really beautiful. To be honest, I was a little intimidated by how saturated they are. But as you'll see coming up, they can be watered down really nicely. So I'm really glad I swatched them first. They look very different from their dry form, which was really cool to see when I was swatching them. I loved how the indigo color had this beautiful two-tone quality. 
So I ended up using that color as my base for the piece. Okay, time to actually create something. So I taped a sheet of the aqua pad paper down on a bamboo board that I have. I was inspired by the cat walk stickers and print that came with the box, so I wanted to try to use a similar color palette and subject matter. I had this idea of a group of cats in a triangle or pyramid type composition with one cat being sort of the peak of the triangle. And I also wanted to do a few different breeds of cats. I couldn't show much of the sketching process because the pencil is so light. And despite the pencil having sort of a strange gummy feeling, I actually really liked working with it. It was great that I wasn't able to go too dark, as I am sometimes inclined to do. It's also soft enough that it didn't leave any grooves in the watercolor paper, and it erases really well, so all good things. I also thought it would be fun to have certain elements of the piece coming out over the border, so into the taped off area. I wanted it to feel like certain elements were breaking out of the composition. So I had the bottom cat's paw sticking out a bit and the top cat's ears poking up. I forgot to cut these pieces out at first. Luckily, I remembered pretty early on and I was able to cut them out with a little X-Acto knife I have. It's like a clickable pen, but it's a little knife. It's really handy. I'm also using the Scotch Sensitive Surface Tape that I use all the time. It's great for not ripping the paper. Okay, so I want to talk through my watercolor process a bit. I started off the painting really just using that indigo color, and it's really cool because it already looks like I'm blending multiple colors together, and I'm not. I'm just using the indigo and letting it do its thing. So certain areas look a little more pink, and certain areas look a little more bluey, purple indigo. And just an aside here, I would love to find a tube of watercolor paint that has this look, so if you know of any, please let me know. I feel like Daniel Smith might? I don't know. Okay, on to the process. My approach is to start laying down the shapes I see in flat washes, leaving hard edges where they are harder in the reference, and also softening edges with a wet brush when I feel like I need to. So for example, on the shorter haired cats, the edges of the cat, like the side where it goes from cat to background, is a little bit harder than the fluffy cat. His edges are a little bit softer because his fur is longer, and so more light is coming through the fur sticking out of his head, and it gives sort of a softer, a softer look. And so for him, I'm going in and softening the edges of his head with a wet brush while the paint is still wet. And I do the same thing for shadows on the cat. There are going to be certain areas where shadows are a sharp line, and there's going to be certain areas where the shadow gradually rolls off. So I'm often squinting at my reference and trying to gauge what these shapes are and what these edges are on the shapes. Oh, and you'll see on the second cat that I bring in an outside brush, a brush not from the box. I just needed a bigger brush to get in the larger shapes on the cats because the travel brush was just a little too fine for this. It couldn't hold enough paint and water to be able to cover a large area smoothly. And this is probably my fault for choosing the scale that I did. I mean, it's not huge. It's like six by eight, but maybe just a little too big for the little travel brush. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. 
I use Squarespace to host my website. It was super easy to design and customize my website to look both professional and reflect my personal style. I use it as a portfolio to display my work, as a store, and also just a hub for all of my bits and bobs around the internet. It's nice to have all of my social medias linked in one place. I can show people and brands what I do, what I'm all about, and through it, I can drive my business with shop sales and brand deals. I actually just relaunched my online store last month. With Squarespace, setting up a storefront is painless. I'm selling prints, stickers, and originals, and it's great because I don't have to use a third-party marketplace that would take a percentage from all of my sales. I also get to choose exactly how the storefront looks so it can match the aesthetic of my work. Squarespace also offers flexible payment options for my customers, so they can pay however they choose to, including paying in installments with Afterpay and Clearpay, which I think is really great. I've recommended Squarespace to people in my personal life for ages, so I'm happy to be sponsored by them and to be recommending them to you guys. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash emilyhughes to get 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again Squarespace for supporting this channel and let's get back to the art. I'm still very much trying to figure out my ideal watercolor process. So on each cat I sort of start a little bit differently. Like on the first one I didn't start with the eyes but I think on the second and third one I think I did start with the eyes. Another thing I'm trying to figure out with my watercolor process is how far I like to push my watercolor paintings. I'm still trying to find that sweet spot between unfinished and finished. You'll notice that I start to carve out the whiskers fairly early on, which is really different from how I would go about a gouache or an oil painting, where the whiskers would be more of a final element that I would add at the end. With watercolor, you have to think about these details really early on. Same with the reflections in the eyes. You have to remember to leave those light, whether it be the white of the paper or a few values from that, maybe one wash of color because sometimes they're not completely white, those reflections. But with the whiskers, it really adds a lot of depth to start carving these out early on, and I definitely don't capture every whisker on the cats. Like I always say, we want to simplify our image, so you get to choose which whiskers you think make the piece the most visually interesting, the most visually appealing. This is where design comes in, rather than just painting photorealistically. You'll see at the end of the painting I do add a few whiskers. I like having the variation of the whiskers that are negative space and the whiskers that are positive space. So I do bring in a few other colors besides the indigo. I decided to bring in the midnight blue, which is a really lovely sort of phthalo-ish blue. And I used this a lot on the cat in the back. I wanted their colors to be slightly different so that they would stand out from one another, so that they would feel different.
I also used the cherry red and I mixed it with a little bit of indigo so it wouldn't be too stark, but it was really fun introducing this magenta sort of pink to the painting. I spent a little bit of time looking at the color sheets and the swatches, deciding what cool red I wanted to use because they were pretty similar. So a little bit about the Viviva color sheets. I looked into them and they are dye based rather than pigment based. So that means they are very bright, very transparent, and they probably aren't the most light fast, which is definitely something to consider. But I think these sheets are more meant for sketching on the go, probably to be used in a travel watercolor sketchbook. It seems like that's what they really lend themselves for, in which case the light fastness doesn't really matter. So I wanted the piece to have sort of a gradient going from dark to light in the background, the bottom being the darkest. So I mixed the indigo and the midnight blue to get a nice deep dark blue and I tried my best to sort of create a gradient around the cats. I wanted the farthest cat's tail to be the opposite gradient, so darkest at the top and then get lighter as it goes down, and I really liked the effect of that. I also didn't want the background gradient to feel super, super smooth. I wanted it to feel more atmospheric and misty, almost like there is a glow coming through a fog or a mist. And I think it kind of worked. I almost wonder if I should have gone even darker at the bottom of the painting, but I still really like how it turned out. So with the finishing details, I'm just going in and pulling out some shapes that I want to come forward a little bit, going over them. I'm squinting at the piece and making sure that it has the effect I want. I had a lot of fun getting in those final whiskers. And here's the exciting tape peel. I was so scared that maybe watercolor had seeped under the tape, but it didn't. It was super clean and the paw looked great sticking out and the ears looked great and I was really happy with it. I've never done this sort of thing before where the painting breaks through the, the border, but I really like it so I might try it again in the future and you guys should try it too. 
You've probably noticed that I haven't used the fine liner. The original plan was to finish the piece with the fine liner to bring out certain details, add emphasis to certain areas, but I was really scared of ruining it because I really liked the softness of just the watercolor. So I was humming and hawing over this. I was like, I've got to use it for the challenge. I asked my partner and he agreed that I should not add in the black lines. It would just look too stark against the painting in the style I had painted it in. So it was sort of with his permission that I was like, okay, I don't have to use it for the sake of the video, but I did use it to sign and date the back. So that's my, that's my loophole guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, let me know what your favorite cat is in the painting. Is it the tall, intelligent boy in the back? Is it the very aloof floof in the middle? Or is it the serious guy on the bottom that means business? Painting-wise, I think I like the cat at the top the most. I don't know, let me know what you think. So that is it for this one. Thank you for watching. Thank you once again to Squarespace for supporting my channel. And thank you also to my lovely channel members and patrons over on Patreon. Your support means the world to me. Thank you so much. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, a like or a comment helps out a bunch, and yeah, I will see you all very very soon with another video. Bye bye